love. So, Jérôme, who is listening to you? Bonjour à tous. Thank you for this introduction, and I really like to thank the organization for uh, allowing me to speak uh, to you today. At quite an early hour about sexuality, um, as you will discover, I think it's really important to talk early about sexuality, although I don't think it's necessary to, to talk about it um, early in the morning, rather early in life. Um, but I hope to convince you about that um, during this talk. Um, what I intend to do is to um, talk you through um, the uh, research or the existing research on sexuality, relationships and autism, and afterwards have a look um, into the future and into um, priorities for future um, research. So let's have a look at the uh, dominant views on sexuality and relationships and um, over the past um, four decades. And um, then we start in the early 80s, um, and I think the uh, quote um, you, you can read now is exemplary for um, one of the uh, views on sexuality. Um, Indica or it indicates that, or it's, it's a quote from a, a discussion in the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders between professionals, caregivers, um, and families of autistic people. Um, and one of the quotes in the article um, says that sex is not for the majority of autistic people. So we don't have to um, provide sexuality education um, if you don't talk about sex. Um, people won't get uh, interested in sex and life will will not get um, more complicated. Um, before you start throwing things at me, I'm not, um, not agreeing with this, but I think um, the authors and, and also the people I'm quoting did a really important um, um, work um, by already discussing um, the need for sexuality education um, in the early 80s. Now, another view um, is reflected in the keywords um, from um, all the important or the, the um, um, publications on sexuality over the past four decades. And as you can see in this word cloud, there's a lot of, there was a lot of attention to um, problematic uh, views and problematic aspects um, of sexuality. Um, if you have a look, you see um, things like hypersexuality, paraphilias, um, offending inappropriate um, behaviors. And it's only um, the past decade or the past two decades that there is an increasing attention um, on sexuality as a normative part of um, human uh, development also in autistic people and even better um, the last decade we see an increasing attention to diversity and also diversity relating to sexual attraction identity development and uh, diversity relating to the experience of sexuality and um, what I really liked to do today was to show you the trailer of uh, a movie, uh, a short movie that is, has been released earlier this year and in the meantime is running for an Oscar nomination. And I wanted to show it to you because I think it reflects um, the present views um, I hope you share with me um, on sexuality. My, my Mind is a film about how having a brain that's wired differently affects or can affect your social life and particularly your love life, like flirting, sex and romantic relationships um, that can, I don't think, have to be necessarily challenging for people on the spectrum. Um, and one of the examples they give here is um, the influence of, it can be complicated because of the unwritten rules, um, but as you will see in the, in the uh, in the movie, also um, sensory issues and other uh, characteristic, characteristics relating to autism can be um, of influence. So, let me show you a small... Yeah.
If you have uh, the opportunity to, um, to see the film, I would absolutely recommend it because I think it's uh, a very nice, uh, the, the director really managed to um, offer, uh, or she offers a nuanced view on sexuality and relationships uh, in uh, autistic people. Um, so I will talk you through the main findings on sexuality and relationships um, in autistic people. Um, yep, beforehand, I think it's okay or it's important um, to say that there's always room um, for improvement in um, this research and I think um, you should um, interpret the, the results I'm going to discuss with you in the light um, of the limitations um, that, that, are, that are obvious. There is a lot of, a lot of research is based on rather small uh, groups and we analyze data on group level. Um, there has been some qualitative research um, looking at the lived experience of autistic people and uh, according or relating to their sexuality and relationships, but I think there's a lot of uh, more work to do there. Um, several studies are based on uh, parent reports and a report by caregivers or third parties um, and research based on self-report is only um, starting or we are only starting to do research based on self-report. Uh, most of the studies I'm going to um, show you or I'm going to discuss are based on um, participants with autism without intellectual disabilities and um, verbal people, so we really need a more insight in how people with additional learning disabilities and intellectual disabilities um, deal or experience sexuality. Um, there is really a lack um, of most research has been conducted in Western countries um, and um, I'm going to present you research with it in the Netherlands and Belgium um, and there are uh, cultural differences um, at stake which should be further explore, explored. Um, there's also need um, to um, more attention to um, studies in women with autism and to uh, studies in gender diverse uh, samples. There is really a need for longitudinal studies and I think um, there we, we should um, pay more attention to uh, neurodiversity and to diversity, to individual diversity as uh, Steph was explaining uh, in the session before. Um, so I think we need to get more insight in the individual tra tra trajectories uh, instead of uh, group differences. But this said, I can tell you something about um, sexuality. Um, so I think um, based on all what we know, there is um, no reason to doubt um, that people or autistic adolescents are slower in their pubertal physical um, development. When I was starting research, um, there was no, uh, or starting my research, there were no studies available. Um, but in the meantime, um, for, in, for instance, uh, May and colleagues uh, published a study um, demonstrating that there is no differences in uh, pubertal um, timing. Um, when I started, there was mainly the, the research on sexual development and sexual experiences was mainly based on parent report. And by then, there was the assumption that um, sexual, sexuality development was slower in autistic ad adolescents. And um, less um, of these adolescents um, would have a sexual re experience based on the reports by their parents and caregivers. There was hardly any evidence on, of based on self-report, so we decided to ask um, some um, Dutch and Belgian adolescents on their sexual experience and to compare it to um, a, a control group or a group of, um, out of the general population in the Netherlands, um, just to have an, an impression um, uh, about the differences based on self-report. And um, what I show you here is the number or the proportion of boys in the Netherlands, um, in the general population, who have experience with um, several solo and um, partnered sexual behaviors. And as you can see, um, at age 15 to 18, 
most of most of these boys in the Netherlands um, have been in love, had, were in a romantic relationship, have experienced with masturbation and had experienced an orgasm, and quite a lot, about two thirds till a third, have um, some um, more intimate um, sexual experience. We know that in the general population, uh, most boys um, gain sexual ex or partner sex sexual experience starting with the less intimate behaviors and then um, gradually gaining more um, part intimate partner experience. And what we were uh, interested in was whether we would find a difference um, with the autistic boys. And normally I ask the audience um, to um, guess, but that would be a little bit difficult here, so I'm just going to show you um, that we didn't find any difference. The same amount or the same proportion of boys in our autistic sample um, had experience with solo and partnered um, behaviors, which was contradictory to earlier findings. And we um, intended to try to understand that, so we also asked the parents of these boys to um, report on the sexual experience of their sons. And um, that might explain earlier findings, because a lot of the parents in our sample underestimated the sexual experience of their sons, especially um, solo partnered experiences, which is a good sign. This does mean that these boys haven't been masturbating in public or on the couch in the living room um, because their parents would have known um, in that case. Um, but it indicates um, that um, sexuality is as relevant um, for, quite, for, for the majority um, of um, the um, these boys in this age cat category. Um, we followed them up um, two years later, and if you see in the general population, or in the general population, you see an increase in uh, more in the number of boys who have more intimate partner experience. Um, by then, we um, assumed to find no difference in the in our um, group of autistic um, boys. Yet, um, then two years later, um, we did find an experience. Um, the boys, especially um, here, you see that um, less boys. Um, gained um, partnered experience. And we tried to study that more into detail and, ex and discovered that boys who had um, partnered experience at younger age um, gained more intimate uh, experiences um, over the, the following years. But there was a group of boys who only had a solo experience and did um, made a transfer to a partner experience. Um, and because I was, um, the, all these boys completed questionnaires um, while I was nearby. Um, and based on the remarks they made and questions they asked, um, we wondered whether um, additional qualitative research could um, give us more insight into factors explaining these differences. And I will show you, I will tell you something about that in a minute. First, I want to show you the uh, mean age, just to um, stress that um, also, these boys weren't delayed in their sexuality development. The boys who had experience, um, this is the mean age um, of the people, of the boys with experience in the general Dutch population. Um, and this is the mean age of the boys in our sample. We checked that two years later. This is mean age in the general population. And we didn't find any differences um, in our sample of um, boys with autism. Yet, Afterwards, we invited um, the boys who scored highest on, we, we conducted the ADOS and ADR in all the boys who participated in our research, and we invited the boys who scored highest on the ADOS in order to get, or because we thought we, that would um, allow us to get more insights into the relation between autism characteristics and um, sexuality development. And we did, find, we, we did um, get m more insight in that sense that um, we find all different kinds of factors that varied, 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 were different between, um, all the, um, between uh, these uh, boys and, and, and indicated individual trajectories. For instance, there was a boy who told, um, who, who only had um, solo um, experience and um, but he wasn't that interested in sexuality, and he explained that he didn't feel it that hard. It was funny, but 
he wasn't that aroused, and when he was aroused, he, he, he couldn't discern the feelings in his body. He also hadn't a clue about um, his arousal patterns or his attraction because he didn't, yeah, he didn't feel it. And we were fantasizing about whether it would be possible to, to get a kind of a visual cue. So he thought, if I could get a blue toenail when um, I feel attracted to someone, then I could learn about my, um, my feelings. I could learn about my sexual interests. Or when we design a kind of helmet um, that gives insight in my um, brain activity, maybe we could find some patterns by then. But um, because he didn't feel it, um, he just decided that sexuality was probably not that important for, for him. Other, other guys um, described that they were, they were um, interested and they were really interested in having a partner, yet based on their experiences with classmates and with um, other peers um, and the difficulties they, they experienced in um, dealing with social situations, they doubted whether they could deal with the complexities of romantic relationships. And although they had the opportunity to, to, to get in a relationship, they had decided not um, to, um, assuming that, they, that it would be um, too, too difficult. Others had been in relationships and um, the, the boy, uh, one of the boys um, was, uh, had, was really, of, had been um, in care for all his life, um, had a lot of support, yet he had the most um, sexual experience and he demonstrated really fantastic um, skills in flirting with um, girls, which he had learned from his friends and he had uh, quite a lot um, of partner experience. All of the boys um, um, indicated that the education or the sexuality education they got at school was um, too limited. There were some hesitant teachers explaining something about sex which was rather vague um, and um, then the lesson stopped and they had to do with it or had to deal with it um, themselves and almost all of the boys in our interviews indicated the need for more concrete and, um, and clear um, sexuality education. Some of these boys um, had been looking for information on the internet. Um, Wikipedia was their friend and Google helped them to understand um, the more complex issues relating to sexuality. Um, and several of the boys told, several boys told about um, how they um, had been um, watching porn and learned um, from, from the porn they, they uh, saw. They could explain that, um, they, they could explain how to interpret um, porn, that it was not realistic, um, that it was made to arouse people. Um, yet, in the same time, some of these boys had made lists of the behaviors they saw and um, in their first encounters with um, romantic or sexual partners had been checking off um, their list um, because they really felt the need to get, to get the experience and learn about themselves and their preferences based on that experience. Um, so that was um, another factor. And uh, which, uh, a thing we didn't find in uh, our adolescent sample, but is very clear from uh, qualitative research in adults, is um, are the sensory issues. Um, Matt Tindale and colleagues um, did wonderful work um, interviewing um, or analyzing um, data from adults, um, discussing how they um, uh, experienced sensory overload or the need for um, additional um, stimulation and they um, um, stressed the need for uh, good communication with their partners um, to, to regulate it. Data on adults are rather scare, uh, scarce. We have some uh, recent, uh, there's a recent publication by Picora and colleagues um, with the, around a group of Mark Stokes. Um, they found uh, also in, in uh, autistic adults uh, an interest in sexuality. Um, although the rates of the number of uh, people who had um, sexual experience was, um, is I think rather low. Um, one of the things I would be interested in is that we, at, at present we are using all different kinds of instruments and like the research we did, we were asking really concrete questions like, have you been masturbating? Um, and masturbating means ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. 
um, while a lot of other research are using more broad uh, questions like, do you have sexual experience? And I think it is important in the next, in the coming years to um, try to use um, uh, the uh, more similar uh, instruments to get better insight in sexual experience in, in adults. Sandra Byers did some wonderful work um, in adults. Um, she did find comparable findings uh, in, the, in the general population, although based on their studies, we can't say anything about the number of adults um, with um, sexual experience. Um, but um, their results on well-being were, um, were positive. They did find um, in, their, in a group of adult singles that heterosexual younger men were um, overrepresented. And maybe these are the guys we also see in, in, the, in our study with, with the adolescents, the kids who um, were more hesitant or didn't have the opportunity to find a partner and um, are, uh, don't have um, partnered experiences. In the study of, uh, the study of buyers indicates, um, uh, um, for as far as I concern, that the, that, uh, these that the more heterosexual men will um, have their first sexual experience at um, later age. But again, this is um, not, these are different. Some of the kids have experience at age uh, 14 or 15, and others will have um, later in their lives. We can't say anything on a, um, a, a we should take care and not to, to, to talk about, on, to stay on this uh, um, group level. Okay. Um, learning about sexuality, um, we have some um, studies who have looked into sexuality education and like I said, several of the kids in our studies indicated the need for more concrete sexuality education. Um, several studies indicate um, that people or kids all over the Western world um, need more sexuality education and that sexuality or comprehensive sexuality education is not guaranteed in all countries and especially not for kids with disabilities. Um, and there are hardly any uh, programs specifically designed and tested um, for autistic adolescents and adults. We now have the Tackling Teenage program, which is developed um, by colleagues in the Netherlands and evaluated, um, which is quite nice and, um, and very concrete and clear. Um, yet what I found really interesting was that they asked the kids afterwards um, what they missed in the, in the, uh, in, in the program, and they uh, indicated the need for really specific and really um, complex um, um, issues like gender identity and like uh, fetishism and um, like um, atypical um, sexual interests. These weren't in the program, which I can um, imagine, but they specifically asked to add it and to be uh, more uh, clear about it. Um, it. Research from Stokes and colleagues indicates that um, because um, kids with autism, of some kids with autism, have less um, um, contact with peers, um, and so they will have would have less opportunity to learn from peers. Um, we know that parents often um, indicate that they really want to discuss um, sexuality issues with their kids because they are concerned um, relating to uh, victimization in girls and. Um, uh, in unintentional offending um, by boys, um, but they are hesitant and ask for guidance. When do I have to talk with my kid and how do I do it and which are the things I have to discuss? Um, studies by Holmes or Laura Graham Holmes and colleagues indicated that a lot of parents are, um, find it really important to discuss sexuality, um, yet they discuss the more um, basic and more easy to, to, to discuss um, things, and they found it really hard to um, discuss um, more complex issues. As is the same in professionals. They did, or Laura did a study in uh, pediatricians in the States asking what kind of um, topics should be discussed, and all these pediatricians um, found it really important that all kinds of complex issues would be discussed with um, kids and adults with autism, yet then she asked whether they do discuss these things with, uh, with the, their patients, and then you see that um, they don't. So I think we need to um, train professionals and train cl uh, clinicians 
um, to, be mere, um, to be more skilled um, to discuss uh, these more complex um, sexuality issues with adolescents and adults. Okay, a few words about sexual attraction. Um, there is, has been some discussion on it. Um, we explored um, attraction in a large sample of um, um, autistic adults in the Netherlands. Um, as you can see on the left, we asked uh, 343 autistic women and 316 autistic men about their attraction. And especially in, in the women, you see that um, less, um, or far less uh, women um, report only uh, attraction towards someone of the opposite sex, sex and more to our, towards both sexes. Um, you also see that uh, about 15% um, indicated uh, or responded to the none of these category. So we don't know um, what this means. These can be uh, women who didn't like or didn't want to um, answer our question, but it, also possible that in that category we found the um, women who don't um, f uh, who, who identify as a, a asexual, for instance. The difference in men, um, you see that less men with autism report to feel only attracted to someone of the opposite sex, also that dif difference was significant, um, yet uh, smaller. We also we asked the same um, people about their uh, romantic relationships. And um, as you can see, about half of men and women in, um, the, in the Netherlands autism register um, reports to be in a romantic relationship, and about 80 to 86 percent of them is living together with their partner. These are higher numbers compared to earlier studies, yet other recent research, for instance by Struns and colleagues, um, finds comparable numbers in, um, in adults. Yet these numbers remain lower compared to the um, general population. A typical interest, I um, told you about the questions of the, the kids in the research um, on the Tackling Teenage program, a program they asked for information about paraphilias, um, yet um, we don't know about these atypical interests or we, we know little about the typical interests in, in um, adults. There is for as far as I know, there are two studies, one by Shuttler and another by Fernandez, um, asking um, about specific or atypical um, sexual interests. And here you see the, the numbers um, in autistic men compared to um, general population peers. And um, the blue uh, are the uh, autistic men who have fantasies about masochism, sadism, voyeurism, um, and the orange ones are the, the number of uh, people reporting to have experience with it. Um, in the women, we see lower numbers, um, yet also some um, fantasies, but um, there you see them also in the, um, uh, in the general population peers. These are really small groups, so I, I think, no, I'm sure that um, uh, more studies are needed to um, to get more insight into this. Yet for now, I think um, we should uh, pay attention to um, possible atypical interests in people. Not that this is a problem, it, it doesn't mean that these atypical interests have to be a problem. Um, yes, it can be, but it can be complicated um, for people to um, find out that they are aroused by some of these at more atypical um, patterns. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to be fast. We have um, found um, sad numbers on abuse and victimization. Um, as you can see, um, there are a lot of uh, people, or a, a, quite a lot of people, um, females as well as of women as well as men, report um, negative sexual experiences, and especially um, the females. These numbers are comparable to the uh, general population, and, and, but indicate um, the need for attention to um, negative um, uh, experiences, uh, sexual experiences, and to attention to um, abuse. Results on in inappropriate behaviors and offending um, are um, more positive. Um, we have no okay, we have no um, um, there are. We have no evidence that uh, more people with autism um, offend 
Um, yet there are some case studies and uh, studies indicated that more uh, kids, and especially the kids with uh, uh, intellectual disabilities, demonstrate more inappropriate um, behaviors. What is interesting, or what is important, I think, is that um, a study by Biel and colleagues indicated that autistic ado adolescents who were um, in a hospital because, or, or uh, in a hospital because of their inappropriate behaviors, um, reported high rates of abuse and depressive symptoms. So I think we should really pay attention to their uh, mental health and well-being. And what is important is that um, at present, um, most of the researchers who have looked into it that um, report that there is hardly any attention to autism characteristics and comorbid disorders um, in specialized treatment um, centers, and that um, that is really uh, necessary. Um, Payne and colleagues recently um, published a study um, based on interviews with. Um, people who had, autistic people who had offended, um, asking um, about the reasons why they um, self believed that they had offended. And then you see that some um, of these uh, factors might be related to um, uh, aspects that can relate to, to autism, like uh, feeling isolated, uh, feeling misunderstood, or having misunderstood others, a lack of a partner. Um, yet these are also factors we found in um, general population or in, in offenders um, without, without um, autism. So I'm going to conclude on this and then have a look, a look on the future. Um, as you can, um, I hope it's clear that I think that um, as far as I'm concerned, sexuality is really a normative part of development in all adolescents. Um, and adults, and so also for autistic people, which doesn't mean that everybody has to be in a relationship, that everybody has to have sex with a partner, um, yet I think almost all of us are thinking about um, the place sexuality has in our lives, and I think we should um, pay attention to that when we work together or when we educate autistic kids and work together with autistic adult, adults. Uh, adults. Um, there is a clear, I think there is a need for comprehensive and maybe even super comprehensive and early sexuality education, open communication and support, um, yet we always have to attune to the needs and the developmental level um, of the people um, we are working with or collaborating with. Um, there is, are clear indications that we need to be more aware of diversity. Um, and diverse sometimes means atypical, but atypical doesn't mean problematic. Um, we should pay attention to negative experiences in a preventive way, but also curative. Um, and I think um, we should, um, in, the, in the near future, we should more look at individual tra trajectories and at um, diversity rather than um, um, try to understand the sexual um, uh, or the autistic sexuality on a, a group level. Now, what we did um, the last two years was um, gather uh, people um, to uh, explore priorities for future research. We organized a special interest group at INSAR um, together with autistic adults, autism advocates, um, researchers and other stakeholders and we asked them to uh, think in small groups about um, the question, this question, what are research priorities relating to sexuality and relationships um, that can add to the well-being of, the, of uh, people uh, or can uh, be of interest to the people around them. And by now we, had, we have, um, uh, or um, excuse me, eight groups um, have been uh, thinking um, and working uh, on this, um, uh, which um, included uh, 32 self-identified um, autistic um, adults. And we used a nominal group technique, um, which is a technique that allows people to prepare um, their answers and to take turns and um, discuss uh, ideas they have uh, each in turn. We clarified all these uh, teams and we asked the groups to select, uh, we asked each individual to select um, the teams, uh, the five teams they find um, had the highest um, priority. We did, we did a thematic ana analysis so that we could compare over all these groups. Um, and then we um, calculated the top 10. Um, so we found in total 222 topics, which we grouped in 17 teams. And um, this led to uh, a top 10. 
And on the left, you see the priorities based on all participants of these groups. And on the right, um, we had a look at um, the priorities of the autistic participants only, just to compare. Um, as you can see, the top three um, is comparable. Um, everybody's um, um, convinced that we need to know more about how to support and have healthy sexuality relationships, that we have to find better ways and um, evidence on how to support and promote sexual well-being. Um, and that um, for doing that, we need more information about um, autistic sexual, sexual um, development um, across the lifespan, not only in children and adolescents, but also in adults and older people. We grouped all these teams in um, three overarching teams, and this is my la last slide, um, because we think if you see at all the teams, there are um, several teams indicated, indicating the need for getting a more comprehensive understanding of sexuality and relationship uh, and the, dif the diversity in it on the one hand, and I, we, we felt based on the group discussions that um, a lot of people need a kind of a reference um, for their own experience um, I'm, I'm uh, interested in, or, or I'm not in a relationship, um, is, that, is, is that comparable to others? Um, which kind of relationship, um, um, how many people have relationship, how many people have sexual experiences? Yeah, I'm going to stop. So we, um, we, we need to get a more comprehensive understanding on the, on the one hand. On the other hand, um, we need to um, find more evidence-based services supporting healthy sexuality and relationships. And there was a clear indication that um, we could um, speed up um, this process of getting insight by um, integrating autistic perspectives in research, by doing participatory research, um, but also to um, be aware of to, to make use of um, the lived experience of people um, in, in daily clinical um, care, to listen to people and to think um, with them. So, I thank you for your attention. Um, in case you have any other questions that um, aren't answered um, by this and afterwards, uh, please feel free to contact me. I thank you.